Okay, the um, main thing we're going to talk about today is the incredible phenomenon of the derivative of e to the x. Uh, that's Euler's constant raised to the power x. This comes from the idea that e, of course, called Euler's constant, and it is a um, what they call a non-repeating decimal, similar to pi. Basically, Euler's constant is two is approximately two point seven one eight two eight, and so on. So, so it comes from the limit as n approaches infinity of the quantity one plus one over n to the power of n. Now, one would think that is you know if you look at that limit n is going to infinity causing 1 over n to go to 0 so shouldn't this boil down to nothing more than uh, 1 to the power of infinity which ought to be 1 it turns out that this, uh, the, this the way this limit seems to work is that it doesn't converge on 1 instead it converges on this rather strange number uh, given to be Euler's constant Uh, which is the base of the natural logarithms and so on. Well, d by dx of e to the x, uh, this is equal to the limit as h goes to zero for using the first principles of the derivative of e to the x plus h subtract e to the x all over h. So that's the way it works. Well, if we actually uh, do the next step, you can see that e to the x can factor out and so we have the limit as h approaches zero of e to the x factored out of well this is like e to the x times e to the h here and we subtract well e to the x then is common if that's e to the x times e to the h here using the laws of exponents then e to the x is common that's why we can factor out e to the x we're, we're left with e to the h subtract well e to the x minus e to the x that's one and the bottom is untouched it's h now as you can see here the limit is on h h is the one going to zero and over here we have e to the x and there's no h in this particular e and because of the constant law this basically says that x is a constant with respect to h and so we're allowed to take out e to the x outside the limit as h goes to zero. This leaves e to the h subtract one divided by h, all divided by h. So now the problem is what do we do with this? There, there doesn't seem to be a way um, around this uh, particular limit. If we now rewrite this limit here as being the limit as h approaches zero and we're we're allowing that h equals one over n or if you like n equals one over h that they're just reciprocals of each other then that means one plus one over one over h because that's what n is now is just equal to h one plus h to the power of n which can now be replaced with one over h okay now um that means we can now take this definition of Euler's constant and now replace it up here with e to the h. So this must be now the definition of e itself. That's what this limit is. And we can replace this e over here with this definition of e. So this takes us to e to the x times a limit as h goes to zero of well, <laughs> 1 plus h to the power of, well, 1 over h, but this is already to the power h, so that becomes h over h, subtract 1, all over h. And now, this h over h becomes 1, we get e to the x times the limit as as 
So you can see it here, H goes to zero. Uh, this now becomes one plus H all to the power one. So that's just one plus H uh, without any power really, just one. Subtract one all over H. Well, you can see here that this one cancels with this one, negative one and positive one go to zero, and this h cancels with this h. It's now the limit of a constant, one. We end up with one times e to the x, which is simply e to the x. It's simply e to the x, that's all it is. So we're saying, therefore, the derivative d by dx of e to the x is e to the x. It is, by point of fact, its own rate of change. e to the x is its own rate of change. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. There is no other function I'm aware of that behaves quite like this one.